Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Page of Swords podcast. This is episode nine with John Dorsey, who is Goob. <laughs> Goob, tell me a little bit about that, by the way. I want you to go into how everyone Goob? calls you Goob. <laughs> uh, Goob, the accidental nickname. So, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Reddit bodybuilding. Do you know what that is? I know that that's like, is that like, that's still going on though, right? It's like the forums, like the new age. Yeah. It's, it's like a forum with Reddit and then it's sub interests. So they call it the subreddit. It's mm -hmm. bodybuilding. And it had like, probably like 200,000 people on it way back in the day. I used to post all the time. And one day, I don't like, I honestly don't even know how this happened because it makes no sense. <laughs> One day I post a photo because there was always like a Monday thread where it's like, hey, let's see what your progress is or whatever. I was training for a show. I posted a photo of me doing a front double bicep and my face was all jacked up and I was like real tired. And I said in the thing, here's some shots from this morning. Don't mind my goober face. And that was it. And like six people saw it. Now there's like 200,000 people on this board, but six people like upvoted it and like two people commented on it. Yeah. Next day, everybody's referring to me as goob. My username is not fucking Goob. It had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I don't know. And then, like, now I, I don't post all that frequently. And if I post, it, like, again, people will talk, uh, like, they'll be, like, mention, they'll mention Goob, but not know that it's my username <laughs> all the time. So it's kind of funny to see what they're saying. <laughs> but that's, that's funny because that reminds me of, um, I've heard this story about, like, dog crap training. That was kind of, like, what happened with them, too. He just kind of, like, named his training style dog crap just didn't know what else to call it. And then it stuck because of the forms. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I did not intend that. That was probably five years ago now. It's okay. been a really long time. Because I know forums are like, they kind of get lost. Do you still get on forums or anything like that? I'm, I'm on Reddit all the time. They, they like, a year after that, they made me a mod. The, the head mod, his name is Troy. He contacted me and he was like, hey, we thought you were a mod already, but you're not. So we just like made you one, don't fuck it up. I was like, all right. So I, I check every single day. I don't really post, but because people post dumb shit. I don't know if you've ever had to moderate a general interest bodybuilding forum type of thing, but it's like every single day, there's like, should I bulk or cut? You know, it's like crazy. Just, dumb questions. I mean, he, there was a I kid today. I don't want to shit on him, but he made a post and he was like, I'm 5'4 and 130 pounds. All my friends told me I'm at my genetic natural limit. Do you think I should stop here? Are they right? It's like, if we tell you to quit, are you going to quit? <laughs> Come on, buddy. Yeah, right? Yeah, you just want us to, like, give you advice so that you cannot listen to it. <laughs> yeah, that's my, my favorite. And the question to that question is, if I told you to quit, would you? And usually everybody's like, oh, okay, never mind. I'm, I'm just being a bit pussy about this, so I'll stop. Because they overthink it. Yeah, it's like if somebody tells you to stop, are you going to stop because they told you? Like, if somebody tells you you can't do this thing, are you just going to quit? And if you are, then you don't care that much about it in the first place, and you've learned something. And if not, then stop worrying about shit that's out of your control. Right, and, like, some people just, they don't know how to make a decision on their own. No, yeah, they need everybody to, to validate all of their everythings. Mm -hmm. Now, you've done some shows, so what's your, like, show history? I mean, I saw that, I was looking on NPC website, I think you did... Uh, 2016 was your first show or was there 2015 one? they spell my name wrong a couple times oh that might be why <laughs> you know how they like mix fuck up your last name it's like darcy drossy a couple times mm -hmm. so i competed in 15 16 17 mm -hmm. uh at there's a show in baltimore two shows in baltimore i did a couple around pittsburgh i did teen collegiate nats for collegiate uh, so I did a couple of shows. I was always a middleweight. I uh, mm -hmm. always won my class and then got blown the fuck out in the overall because I was not as big as I needed to be. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I keep seeing first first place here for Maryland, first place for Teen Collegiates. That's the only two that pop up. Um, I, I just very, what's that? I, I very quickly realized that as much as, like, I love bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. I'm not a genetic specimen. I'm not a great bodybuilder. I didn't ever really enjoy the miserable dieting and all that, but I enjoyed like the process and I enjoyed leading other people through it. There were, you know, just cause you're doing that people reach out they're like, Hey, can you help me with this thing? And it got to a point where I was like, I love helping these people more than I love doing it myself. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I should stop, I should stop doing this cause it's fucking miserable for me. 
and some people love it. They fucking thrive on it, and they're the good guys. You know, the ones who are really good at bodybuilding. I am not that. No, and I mean, yeah, like you said, you like the process, but it was probably a good learning experience for you. Did you have someone coaching you? Yeah, yeah, I worked with uh, the first person I ever worked with was everybody has this story. The local guy in your gym. But this guy was he was good. He was a natural pro. His name was Phil. And I don't think anybody knows who he is because he doesn't have like a huge presence. But he was just a super brutal, sarcastic, hardcore motherfucker that uh, shit on me at every opportunity he got. And I loved him to death for it. Uh, <laughs> and then I worked with another uh, local guy in my gym named Jay, who owned this trucking company and had a pretty sordid history of competing and getting arrested and <laughs> in his life. He was, an, he was an interesting person. I learned a lot from him. Uh, I worked with Ross Flanagan. If you guys know Ross Flanagan, the Gaines Bakery guy. Ah, I've, I've heard about the Gaines Factory guy. I just didn't know. I don't really know much about him. The bakery, not the factory. Oh, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah the same, same thing. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, uh, that, that would be it. That would be it. No, that's the guy that has, he has mustards and stuff, right? Or sauces? He has, he calls them sauces. I, I've argued with him that it's a mustard, but he calls it sauces. So, you know, I'm going to agree with you, but disagree because he says the sauces, I think the mustards. He has the most incredible, Ross is one of my best friends ever, by the way. We met at the first show I ever did was the first show he ever did. And we were both like so alienated from everybody that we showed up to the show like solo, both. So like I was there by myself for a bodybuilding show. He was there and we were just kind of like, we both must be terrible people. So let's like hang out because nobody came with us. Oh. And maybe two years after that, he started his uh, Cane's Bakery. And the, these sauces that he's making, he's made them forever. He sent them to me like way back when. Like, hey, try these. I think I'm going to make a sauce out of it. So it's super cool now to see he's selling the fuck out of them. And they're really good. I, they're, they're a little pricey. I don't know if you've, have you tried them? I haven't, but I mean, I know a handful of people that, you know, put it on their IG stories and stuff. I've seen them. They're fucking good. There's one called the sweet poppy sauce, happy, sweet poppy sauce or something like that. It's, there's nothing I like, he sent me a bunch of them and I ate through them and I was like, oh, fuck, I'm not going to order more. It's expensive because I'm cheap as shit. And I went to the grocery store and I've never had this experience where I tried to find a similar product and I couldn't. It's like I tried to find something that was similar to the sauce this man makes. Like, oh, I'll find something reasonably close. It doesn't exist. There's like, if you want it, you have to buy it from him, which is fucking bullshit. But at the same time, I respect the hustle. Uh, Gamesbaker.com if you guys want to buy something. I'll make sure to put it. I'll put it in the show notes and stuff too because I want to, I like giving, uh, I guess you could say that's like a local small business, some publicity a little bit. Yeah, he's out there in Texas. I think San Antonio or something. I don't know. He's somewhere in Texas. He was in Maryland, though. That's why we met at a, this show in Maryland. I think it was called the Gladiator Baltimore something cup. I don't is know. That the, is that the Capital Grand Prix, or is that? No, Maryland? different show. It was also in Maryland. But he won the overall there, actually. And I think he was coached by Boston Lloyd into that show. Oh, okay. So, it was one of those. Good times, right? <laughs> Love that guy. Fucking love that guy. So how did you get into coaching then? Uh, it was honestly Reddit. I blame Reddit for all of this. Mm -hmm. It's Reddit's fault. It was like uh, anybody who's ever competed, like you've probably had this, where people get in your inbox and they ask you questions like, hey, what do you think I should do about this? Or will you coach me? Or I, I'm thinking about doing my first show. Will you help me out with that? Mm -hmm. And my response was always like, yeah, if you act like you're paying me money and actually do the thing, like, yeah, I love this. Because like, yeah, it's... I was, you know, in law school at the time, but this was like really, my passion was not being an attorney or anything <laughs> related to schoolwork. My passion was bodybuilding. So I loved it, but I didn't like, you know, people were shitbags about it and would flake. So I tell them like, hey, there's like a two strikes rule. If you fuck up twice or you don't check in or you're late on something or you're gonna be a binge crazy, like, no, let's not do this. And uh, I got like a cool little portfolio built by just working with people for free and, it, it, they kind of brought themselves to me, which is kind of always how it's been. I don't know. I, I've never been one to like go into somebody's inbox and be like, let me coach you. Uh, yeah. It's like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't really, I've never really had to do that. I don't, like what I see. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you want to be on my team? No, 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 no. <laughs> now if somebody does that, don't be uh, don't be messing with them. There's a reason they're coming to you and you're not coming to them. 
Mm-hmm. I, does that really happen? Like, I think that's more with men. I don't really hear too many girls say that like coaches come to them. It's usually always men. I hear like, oh, after the show, like this person hit me up. Like, does that happen? I guess. Yeah, yeah. It'll it, guys will go like it'll always be like some skeezy local guy that'll like show up to a show. He's backstage. He's like, hey man, you know you're second place and got blown out by a total genetic specimen and never would have won in the first place. But if you join my team, <laughs> like, wait a minute. Wait That's a minute. so interesting. Cause like I said, I, I don't think that happens to girls. Cause I guess guys would come off as creepy and like, I never see female coaches really advertise, especially in person. So to hear that. That's- if you think about it, it's such a fucked up thing to do especially going to shows and doing that you've competed. So you understand. And and you remember like just the, like how volatile you are, like not only like emotionally, physically, mentally, everything you're like, people are, they make these crazy rash decisions. Like on that day, you know, you get blown the fuck out. You thought you were not, you know, thought you were going to win or like you didn't do as well as you thought you were going to do. You're immediately easily willing to blame somebody else. And then some asshole comes up and he's like, you can win the whole world. Like get the fuck out of here. (laughs) What do you mean? I, see, I've had a comment like that before. I had a previous coach that I am no longer with, and I remember um, he was at one of my shows, and we were backstage, and this other, you know, pro coach or whatever you want to call him was like, oh, just stick with this guy. Like, you'll go far. And then I'm thinking, like, now I look back, and I'm just like, that's some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, go, I didn't go far. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, I left that guy. That guy was so terrible, but... Hey, whatever. I'm sure everyone lives and learns. I mean, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's like a personality clash or like, you really have to like the person you're taking direction from. Yes. That's, that's super important. You're right. That is really important. Cause like, I, I have a few people, I'm at the point where I think people come to me cause they see how happy I am with my coach and they're just like, well, how do I find a coach? So you know, I'm just going off of experience with what I dealt with. And I'm like, Hey, like, I just found somebody who I like their personality. I like, I like, look at their clients. Um, and you know, you just kind of like look at the overall package. I also, my coach is also the same height as me. She's more, I don't want to say like, I want to look like her. Hey, but my clients like- out there don't listen to this. Cause I'm shorter than all you motherfuckers. Just ignore <laughs> her right now. Okay. Just whatever she's saying, just ignore it. Okay. <laughs> As you're saying. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, uh, I picked a coach who I feel like just fits with my personality, like you said. She's yeah. also the same height as me, so I feel like body types might be similar. I know that's not the case for everybody, though. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> it's okay. Like, I, I get it, because it's a process. Like, what do you tell people if they're, say, like, because I know you are a coach, but, like, what would you tell people with uh, looking for a coach? So, uh, a lot of considerations. First, don't hate the person. If they irritate you on any level, don't fucking hire them because it's never going to work because they're going to ask you to do hard stuff. You're going to get frustrated. And then that frustration is going to be compounded by the fact that you're already baseline irritated with them and you're never going to listen and waste your money. Second, uh, Blue Taylor, you know who Blue Taylor is? He's, his, his catchphrase is, what's the resume? What's the resume? And he like goes on and on and on. He posts so many, Blue Taylor has the fucking deepest pool of clients I've ever seen. All of his people look like fucking beef jerky. Like he's just a crazy coach. He's insane. Crazy coach, really successful dude. He's got like four Lamborghinis or something. I don't know. But so he's talking about if you're hiring a coach and you go to their Instagram and it's a bunch of photos of them or their butt or them and their butt or just them and their abs and there's no other fucking human being that's been being presented on their page. You know everything you know about them already. Mm-hmm. They're going to ignore the fuck out of you. <laughs> take your money and probably pass the buck to somebody else. Uh, also, Phil Viz says this all the time, and I've said it, and I agree with it. Go look for their worst, like just genetic, bottom of the barrel type clients and find them transforming one of those people into a good bodybuilder. Because it's like, okay, anybody can take, you know, a, a guy who's already fucking high level, born with everything, genetic beast. Anybody can take a guy like that and make him a little better. But if they took like absolute genetic nightmare client and turn them into somebody that looks really good, pay attention to that. Because that means they're in it for the long haul. They're going to be with you and, and make sure that you're constantly making progress. Mm-hmm. So you got to do your research. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and ask around and I mean, sometimes personal testimony isn't always the best because some people don't even know what they're looking at, but it helps. You know, I think it's a powerful thing for your friend to be like, Hey, I'm, I'm happy with this and blah, 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 this, that, and the other. Um, don't be buying 12 week shred programs from people on shreds.com or anything like that like it's they're, they're they don't nothing. exist anymore right that's gone no it exists now but it's like like so the 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 company shreds doesn't exist but the fitness charlatan idea still exists yes you're right yeah that's it's almost like uh i i feel like shreds does still exist they probably just like changed their name and their look <laughs> they're, yeah, they're like they're we need to collapse this llc let's get a new one we're getting sued <laughs> Right, yeah, just yeah. pretend like we're under new management. In spirit, they're still here. For anybody listening that doesn't know what Shreds was, it was like just the original like douchebag crew of like pay us $600 for a PDF document that we put no time into at all. And then also we're going to sell you a bunch of fake test boosters and we'll give you a gym bag if you spend more than $500. And yeah. they hired every popular Instagram guy at the time like, Who's the guy, Joey Swole? Yeah, I think they had Paige Hathaway, too. Paige Hathaway, Joey Swole. The one guy who got caught photoshopping all of his photos, I don't remember what his name is. Mm. Devin Physique. I think his name is Devin Physique. Why do they have, like, they have, like, porn star names? <laughs> well, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason for that, too. <laughs> we won't talk about that here. <laughs> <laughs> like... I get it. Like, it's easy to remember the name, I guess. But it's just like, are you like the porn star of bodybuilding? <laughs> it was It was an interesting time, a really interesting time. Um, sure. That's probably what killed getting contracts. <laughs> you know what I mean with these companies? Like, Shreds probably made it, made like the staple that you can just pull these like newbie Instagrammers, get a few that are like super douchey and just call it a day. Yeah, they're like, hey, put $30,000 into this and then do nothing else. Don't try at all. You don't got to try. You can sell some bullshit and everybody will buy it. They're like, hey, these girls, they're already taking a bunch of pictures. Just, you know, give them a shaker cup. <laughs> put that shaker in the corner, honey. And retake the photo. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Just, just, just hold it in your hand and then like twist your butt around or something. I mean, the, the power of that shit is, it's true though. It's really true. Uh, one of the reasons anybody knows who I am is the stupid book that I wrote called 35 eggs a day. And it was, so I, I was talking about Reddit, mm -hmm. Reddit bodybuilding. When I started on it, there was like 200,000 people on it. By the time, like it was big, it was like 700,000 people on there. And most of them like in some way knew what my bullshit was. So I started, everybody would ask, you know, what do you, what do you diet? What's your, what do you eat? And I started telling everybody I ate 35 eggs a day for no real reason. There was no reason to do it. I just thought it was funny. And I, I was making fun of, do you know what GOMAD is? No. So, so GOMAD is gallon of milk a day, G-O-M-A-D. Oh. Mark Rippletoe has created this thing like years ago and it was kind of a meme, but some people took it seriously. And I thought it was stupid as shit. So when people asked me, I'd say 35 eggs a day. And I gave no explanation, no methodology, no reason for doing it. I would just say it in like, that was it. Just say it. 35 eggs a day. If they asked for clarification, I'd say three dozen eggs minus one every 24 hours. <laughs> and like, what the fuck are you talking about? And it turned into a thing where people would actually try it. I was a nobody. Nobody knew, knew the fuck I was. I still am a nobody. And people would see me post about, I eat 35 eggs every single fucking day. And they would then do it. I got Snapchats from these people where they'd have a blender with like 20 fucking eggs in it. And they'd be oh. like, I figured out if I front load these eggs in the morning when I'm really hungry, it's easier to get through the last 15. And I'd reply and be like, holy shit. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> like, I was, no. What does your fridge look like? Like, see, all eggs. That's three dozen eggs every day. <laughs> it's like 35. What about? The, Are you really surprised? <laughs> it was. And so it made me write this book. It's called 35 Eggs a Day, A Basic Guide to Fitness. And the, the whole premise of the book is there are people online that are going to lie to you and they're going to lie to you because they have a platform and you're willing to believe them and they're going to have some end goal that is not getting you fucking jacked out of your mind the end goal is usually in their pockets and i didn't really want to make money off of this book I, but i wanted to offer a 
an, in, a look into, wow, you motherfuckers have listened to me for the last year on this forum about, like when I dropped the book, everybody was like, oh, cool, he's going to tell us more about it. And it's like, no, no, the book literally was telling you, you can do these other things that are basically free to get into shape. Uh, go spend that money on a fucking kitchen knife or a cutting board and regulate your diet instead of listening to some idiot on the internet who was telling you to eat three dozen eggs a day. <laughs> that doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. No, and I did listen to your podcast. You were talking about the benefits of like a nice like cutting board <laughs> and stuff like that. So I get that's from the book. Now, do you sell that on Amazon or like what is that? Nobody buy it. Don't buy it. If you're listening don't to this, don't buy it. buy it. If you want it, email me, gbtraininglink at gmail.com. I will send you a copy for free. Please don't give me any more money for this stupid fucking book. It is, it literally was me trolling. It's a meme. <laughs> It's not real. The book tells you to just stop being stupid. I'm like telling you that right now. <laughs> What's that? You're like a real life form, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, don't, just, don't do it. I'm a living troll. I'm sorry. I, it, it blew my mind though. Cause I was like, wow, like I'm nobody at all. And all these people listen to me about eating. Like you would think if you had all these eggs in front of you, you'd be like, this is a bad fucking idea. Like I wouldn't care who you, who told me to do it. Are they drinking it raw or like they cooking it or what? Because <laughs> that's the next question. Most people are like, ooh, do you drink? Like, I know some people drink egg whites. So is that, <laughs> I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Uh, have you ever heard of muscle egg? Yeah. I order that shit religiously. It's yeah. really, really good. Because it's like chocolate milk, but it's like egg whites. It's fine. It's kind of expensive, but. That's what uh, my coach, she's like, if you just want to drink them, she's like, just do egg whites and sugar-free Hershey syrup. And she calls it chocolate milk. Like chocolate water, I mean chocolate water. Chocolate water, it's good enough. It's it's good enough. I'd I'd rather just kind of drink them because it's like way easier to just do it and get about your day. But but you're a guy. I feel like well, I mean, I'm sure there's girls too. But like you guys, if you're in your off season and stuff, I feel like you guys have to put a lot more calories in, and sometimes you're probably just fed up with eating. Yeah. Also, our stigma for farting a lot is way lower than for women. Way lower. <laughs> Protein farts, yeah. So if you drink them, it might like not be so gassy or whatever. Oh no, it's really bad. It's it's still it's still that bad. We get criticized way less though. It's really a problem in society, I think. What the guys are more used to it or what? No, if like I fart, and nobody's like nobody's got a problem with it. If you fart, oh. like, what the fuck is she doing? You know, that's just like they used to say girls don't poop in high school. Yeah, not, <laughs> not true. It's the truth, right? <laughs> Yeah, they, they do poop, guys. Every every girl poops. They fart too sometimes also. They eat a lot of egg whites even more. Just because this is funny, I remember in college there was a girl talking to a group of friends around me and she must have had been talking about going to the bathroom and I just wasn't paying attention. And then they asked me and I was like, what do you, what? Oh, girls don't poop. She was so mad. <laughs> I was sitting there like, what did I say? And I'm like, oh, I probably just made her feel less of a girl. Yeah, I'm you see that jerk. Is one of the original memes. I don't know why. I don't know who decided that, but it's uh, it was an original meme. So I got it. All right. Here's the next question. You ready? Yes. Your pre-workout. Tell me like the story behind your pre-workout and everything. So the label designer for the pre-workout, phenomenal graphic artist that I know named Paige. Oh, me. <laughs> uh, pre-workout, I just kind of realized that Every single time one of my clients would ask me what pre-workout they should use, I was just sending money to somebody else. And I had enough capital to sort of just do one on my own. They call it white labeling, where you contact a supplement manufacturing company that basically makes, you know, when I went, when I went in to go pick up all of uh, our product, it was like, you saw like 17 labels that you already recognize at GNC that all came out of the same manufacturing company. So it's not like you have to have all this industry in this day and age to do it. You just have to have money and an idea and a, an approved product. And at the time, uh, I was using a lot of Nuopept, which is a, a nootropic. It's kind of like a brain-focused drug. So I really wanted to get in the pre-workout. I looked at the costs, and that was that. It's called Cracked for obnoxious egg reasons. And uh, yeah, the eggs. Got to continue the theme. <laughs> funny story. I remember we had hired a graphic designer to do the label first before you did one and it was absolute garbage and I was so upset. It was so upsetting. And then I think, Milo, please stop squeezing. My dog, every single time we do a podcast, he's just gotta okay. do this. Uh, and then 
you within 24 hours busted out like exactly what we asked for. And I was, I was like, what the fuck? Why don't we do this in the first place? My bad. Yeah, I was so mad because mm, I'm not even, it, mm, that's it. That's it's it. okay. No, I've, I've seen that with people. I just, um, I did a, I think they found me through you. The, the one, tri, that one, mm, I can never say the company, right? The triangle people. I don't know if it was you or not. Let me show the you. Triangle people. <laughs> it was, I can't say I'm familiar. I remember who referred me to Oh, me. Trilateral Performance. I yeah, think yeah, they, yeah. they were through you. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so I did that for them. They just sent me this yesterday. That's, That's awesome. The logo I did for them. But yeah, like even them, they were just like super like, wow, that I got everything done so quickly. And I'm like, I guess that was my job that kind of warped me for like, <laughs> getting stuff done real quick so yeah oh it's like when people actually deliver on stuff you know quickly it's it's nice and when it looks like what you asked for and i remember the labels that they sent initially were all like it was like they didn't even have our like nutrition panel on it it was like for a fucking protein powder and there was like shit misspelled and they had my address wrong it was like a big shit show of some intern didn't care at all oh boy and no. they charged us like 400 bucks or something for it. And I was like, 400, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> 400 bucks to fuck it up like twice. And then we were and like, there's me. Like, were they even a bodybuilder? I'm just curious. Do you know? I think they sat at a desk and ate a lot of mac and cheese, probably. Then there's me, an actual bodybuilder. And I'm just like, I know exactly what you're looking for. So, yeah. Cause you've walked into the stores and seen what it looks like. Then, yeah. And, um, I mean, I don't know where this works. <laughs> School, but like in school you learn like product design like that and it's like it's actually pretty cool like I'm really glad that you gave me that opportunity because if I ever decide to leave my advertising job like Axe and Sledge is like super close in Murraysville so I'm always like if I wanted to get a job at a supplement company or something I'll just be like well I did this <laughs> yeah yeah I'm in I'm in <laughs> yeah <laughs> so Back to uh, going back to your clients and coaching and everything. So what's your biggest, as a coach between men and women, because I know you have both, like what what's easier than the other? Like you, you're obviously a man. Is it hard to coach girls? Have you gotten used to it? How did you kind of learn, I guess? Um, I would make the argument that less – so like less important than gender is personality and work ethic. Mm -hmm. I noticed that there's a common thread among all the clients that I get along with that get a bunch of work done and it doesn't matter what their gender is. It usually just matters if we're on the same page and they're willing to do the things. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't I, like, if you ask for like a dropout rate compared to men and women, I'm sure they're pretty even. I think I have more men hire me. Although I looked at my story the other day and I was like, wow, I, I posted like 12 chicks today. Like, I didn't even, you know, like, oh, okay. Like, I guess guys just don't post that much or, or tag me and stuff that often. But I do coach a lot of women. I coach a lot of men. I'd say it's probably 60, 40, maybe 70, 30 men to women. Uh, but I don't think there's any real difference. Uh, the, but the women that, in the, in the women and the men that, that both work well with me, like they have to be open to criticism. I'm really blunt and stuff with people. And I've had equal amounts of men and women, you know, kind of like not rise to that occasion where I'm like, hey, this is really terrible. You need to try a little harder, man. Like, this isn't how you're supposed to be doing it. Do you have any that are in prep for this year, year or next year? Uh, this year, I've got a couple left, but I, I pulled the plug on most people. If they just wanted to compete and just sort of under, understood that this was a pretty bum year for mm -hmm. that type of thing. Okay, but for most of them, plug was pulled probably this third show that I got canceled on the client way back in April, May, I was like, Hey, we're off season. Everybody's going to be big next year. What do you think? Which is yeah. way better than just slam fucking through and being like, well, let's hope there's a stage for that for us to be on. Well, it's good that you kind of did pull that plug. Like I'm sure you're a coach that you prefer like keeping somebody healthy uh, and off season's never a bad thing. I think a lot of people really like the ones that did hold on, I think they really wanted to hold on and prove something. So they wanted to be like, oh, I prepped through coronavirus. It's like, well, you may have given up some size for next year. Mm -hmm. you know? I know. Well, a few of my friends, um, 
I think they ended up developing some pretty bad health problems from trying to keep it on, keep it going for as long as possible. That that was a thing where it was like your show was in April, but it got delayed to June, and then it got delayed again to August. Are you still going to do it? And a lot of people were like, "Yeah, I don't want to give up." It's like it's really not giving up. It's the world has fucked you and worked against you this year. Just go next year. That is so true. Yeah, and like for I mean, I just know from a women's point of view but like you are going to do so much more damage you're taking you're like trying to like run yourself thin and then 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 if you want to do a prep next year because your show got canceled you're you're really like not fully recharged because you probably damaged something along the way and then by contrast if you went off season april may you're fucking ruined to go by the time you know next february march kicks around you're like fuck let's hit some summer shows i'm ready and you're like in a good place you had a year off a lot of people should take a year off regardless of what's going on in the world so many people want to compete back to back year after year if you do it once and you didn't show up any better maybe you should take some time well how is it with your clients whenever um like a regional versus a national show like do you like, I know some coaches will not let a client do a national show until they win an overall. Do you feel sort of that way? Are you open to letting your clients, like, pick shows if they want to do nationals or whatever? I usually pick the show for them. If I don't think they're ready, we're not going. Okay. Uh, I'm a big fan of, like, the larger regional shows. And my role is usually, like, go shit on everybody there and then we'll go. You know, you go win your class or win the overall there. Okay, we're good. If you go to the Krispy Kreme Classic, you were the best guy who showed up out of four. Maybe, maybe we're not ready yet because there are only three other guys there and they're probably not going to nationals. Uh, sometimes, though, it's good for people to stand next to the really good people, especially if they don't get it. You know, some people just don't get it yet and they don't understand. Like, no, To no fault of their own, they just don't understand what it's supposed to be and what goes into it and how you're supposed to look. And, that's really motivated. You've probably experienced this. You go to a show and you're like, you come back and you're like, fuck, I'm really motivated to get this on the road and I'm going to be you know, more strict. I'm going to be more intense in the gym. So I think that aspect of it is good, but I would never send somebody to nationals if I didn't think they were going to at least be in the top five. And that's okay. I mean, um, cause you usually travel for shows too, for your clients, right? Like yeah. I, I had a, a little misstep the last show I traveled for. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to go to any more for the rest of the year, but next year I will be refreshed and ready to go. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about the Olympia? <laughs> like in December, I just, it's not, the not it's there's a, never going to be an expo I think anymore. Right. I don't think they're going to have an expo. It's going to, I mean, who knows? They're going to have to like bring Kai Green in and like do a whole bunch of crazy shit for anybody to really want to pay attention to it. I think. I know Dave, Dave Palumbo, I think, talks about Kai Green more than anybody. Like, every time he has a video on YouTube, he's got to bring up about how Kai needs to do this or be there. And I'm like, I know Kai's great, but all he does is play games. He don't, he doesn't want to do this shit anymore. I mean, he does, but he doesn't. Kai Green is the most shunned bodybuilder in all of bodybuilding. But he is also, I, I, in my opinion, I think he's the greatest bodybuilder we've ever been able to see. I think he's... I think he shits on everybody. I think he beat Phil a couple of times, but he's got that negative, you know, grapefruit thing. And he's like a straight, like he's an interesting dude. He's not afraid to be himself. And that's like a super powerful thing, but I think it scares the big wigs of like, Hey, maybe, maybe this guy isn't, you know, the representative of our thing. And he saw that and then said, fuck you guys. I'm going to make a comic book. I'm going to make a pro, uh, supplement line. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to travel, tour the world, go meet my fans and all that. He's, I think he's top dog as far as social media exposure, probably top dog as far as earners go. And it's because he separated himself from the industry and said, I'm, I'm big enough to stand on my own. I think he realized it for a really long time, but was happy to still compete in the IFBB and not be his own thing because it was really important for him to win an Olympia. Yeah. And a little more worldwide in my opinion too. Yeah. like what you said, traveling to see fans. I mean, he's been to China and everything like, he's like a God in India. Like he's yeah. like a God there. Yeah. And he like really like loves it there. Like you see in the videos, he's like really 
trying to get to know their culture and he's such like a little nerd in his environment. <laughs> if nobody's seen the video, there's, uh, there's a YouTube series of Kai Green and it's kind of like a day in the life thing. Mm -hmm. And it's him at the peak of his game. He's like a very wealthy dude, very well-known bodybuilder. Uh, I think he was sponsored by like muscle meds or something at the time. And he still has this shitty little Brooklyn apartment where like there's no heat. He's like turning on his burner for like heat in his place. And this man's like cooking his own meals. It's like they, they follow him. He walks to the Asian market. He buys like his chicken and stuff. He goes back to his apartment, cooks it on this like shitty little busted ass pan, packs all his meals in a grocery bag and then takes it with him to the gym. He's like, he goes to a posing seminar that's run by this amateur. And people are like, Kai, what are you, like, why are you going to this? You're like one of the best posers in the world. And he hits them with Kai Green logic. He's like, you can learn something from everybody. And I don't know, watching that, it's, it's like, wow. Like he says, this guy is, in my opinion, the best in the world at posing, best bodybuilder in the world and still trying, like he still learns from other people. I think it's because he had that, I've, I've heard that when he had a rough childhood and everything, so it's almost like he, he knows what it's like to be rock bottom. So he just knows that he doesn't want to do that anymore. So he's just kind of adapted and gotten better and just remembers where he came from. Do you, do you remember the train with Kai Green videos? No. He had a, like a contest a couple years in a row where it was like you entered and he would like fly you out to him and you got to train with him for a whole day. And I wanted, I like applied to those so bad. And I never, <laughs> I never got picked, but it was super cool. He'd like, there's they video it and he'd be all like on the stairmaster like just dropping fucking mind altering wisdom bombs on these kids that just were like what <laughs> kai green you give him a hoodie so him. yeah i'm really happy that um you know antoine the one from canada like his posing <clears throat> is starting to remind me of kai it's so entertaining so i'm hoping he'll be that next like kai green poser style because we it is nice to have someone who poses like that and who like has a lot of fun yeah i think it was arnold 17 or arnold 18 whatever the last one when kai i think it was 17 or 16 because kai won them all and then said peace bye took all the money and invested in his supplement company but it was the arnold in columbus not like the you know one of the international brazil or something he had the craziest routine. Go look it up. If you're listening to this, go look it up. I think it's Arnold 2016 Kai Green posing routine. It's insane. It was like the best thing I've ever seen him do. He just destroyed it. And then that was the last we ever saw him on a bodybuilding stage. Did he do Billy Jean? I do believe he did. Or no, he did uh, Dirty Diana maybe. No. Uh, I, say, I think he did a Michael Jackson song that was like really good. I do remember seeing that. And then I think on Fuad's channel, he said that's like probably his favorite, I think. Don't quote me on that, but. Yeah, yeah, it, there's a, there is a, yeah, I think he did Billie Jean there and there's a Dirty Diana video that he does too, where it's like, oh, what the fuck, who is this guy? He's like an yeah. artist, but also like giant jacked human being. <laughs> I know, and then seeing him on Stranger Things, I was really like, oh cool, bodybuilding's getting into the movies. Like, that's really entertaining. It's funny because it's like, no, it was just really Kai Green is getting into the movies because he's just such like a well, you know, like they're not going to invite anybody else to do that. They're just like, Kai, you're so, he puts everything out there. He's like an artist. He's, he does his comedy. Nerd, I love it. You mix bodybuilding and nerds together. It's fantastic. <laughs> We're all just giant nerds, honestly. It's like we learned all of this discipline from like fucking RuneScape and World of Warcraft. <laughs> I get it. And except for bikini girls, I don't, I don't think they're nerds. <laughs> nah, <laughs> no. Nah. Kind of a uh, Hollister models. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, is, it, it comes, you know, places their advantage though. It's like, you know. you know, who like grew up with Dragon Ball Z. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you grew up with Dragon Ball Z, you were like, I want to be jacked. I really just want to be jacked. That's it. How do and I get you know, It's like to be angry at stuff and like. <laughs> it goes super saiyan. <laughs> exactly. Like that's what we do in the gym. <laughs> So do you have any like future plans? Like, are you done competing? Like, what are you thinking? Um, my, I don't know why people ask me this all the time. Oh, really? My, yeah, I'm like, have you seen me? I'm like weak and fat and terrible. It's hey, bad. you never know. Sometimes there's still a little fire left in you and you can get back into it. My, my thoughts are this. I would love to, absolutely. But it would be anti-client. It wouldn't help my people. I couldn't, like, I have a lot of clients. I spend all of my day doing this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it stresses me out while I'm able to eat what I care to eat 
while I'm not burning myself down in the gym, while I'm not on all sorts of compounds that make me a testy motherfucker to begin with. <laughs> so for me, it's like, I one enjoy more seeing my clients progress and seeing my clients win and I could win whatever the fuck it was for me. And it wouldn't offset the fact that I knew I didn't give these people that are paying me a lot of money, everything that they paid for. If that makes sense. It's like, it, I couldn't do both at the same time in a perfect world. If I could, absolutely. But I don't see, unless I cut my client load like in half or like hired people or any of that shit, I don't ever see me being like, Hey guys, I'm competing. And it's like, I, I know, like I know reality. I'm not the most genetically blessed guy in the world. I'm not going to be an IFBB pro. It's just not going to happen for me. It's I'm happy and comfortable where I'm at right now. I love my job. This is the biggest blessing that has ever been given to me. And if I did something like bodybuilding, it, it sucks to say this, but it's a selfish sport. Everybody has to agree with that. It's, it's the pursuit of your own personal excellence. It's a selfish thing. It's not bad being selfish. I don't think, you know, people, selfish or selfish. No, it's a selfish sport, but it's your own personal excellence, which is cool. I'm being paid to help other people in their own personal excellence, so I can't focus on mine. And I don't care about mine. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I, I and any time, unless everybody, if y'all fire me, I may be on a stage, you know, by next year, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, and that's good that you put a lot of focus then into your clients because like we all know what it's like to be in prep and you're sometimes just not completely focused. Maybe you're doing a shit ton of cardio. And if you've already got this like huge workload that just doesn't work, I don't know. I'm sure you feel that way that sometimes it's just the focus isn't all there. Yeah. I mean, I, I burn out. I have a nervous breakdown like once a week anyway, like just doing, just doing what I do. It'd be like Sunday or Monday. Usually you guys won't see me post. There's one day where I post nothing and my phone's off. I don't do anything. I'm having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> You're like, please come back later. Please just send all your check-ins on time. Yeah. Well, it's because, so I have my guys usually check in Saturday by, by 1 p.m. EST. Mm -hmm. And from wake up to the time my eyes start bleeding at like Sunday at 2 a.m., mm -hmm. I'll like barely be there. Like I'll be at like 12 o'clock in the queue. And so people will check in like all night, all night. And then I, Sunday, I have to usually take a little break, but I'll like get a couple. And then Monday I'm like full force at it, but it'll take me that, you know, Saturday, Sunday and Monday to get through them all just because a lot of people will send them late or, or, or what have you. And that plus prep, it would be, I, I would, I'd be sending two word replies. I'd be a fucker. <laughs> You'd be like, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Looks great. Sounds good. Focus on me. Nope. <laughs> Or and, you're you're not doing good. Uh, please give me another twenty four hours to respond. <laughs> yeah. Can't do it. Can't do it. Um. So yeah, I guess we've already been on for almost an hour. Is there anything you want to promote or anything you? I know we got to talk about your podcast too. You got to throw that one out there. Oh yeah, guys. I'm uh, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It's just Gubu, G O O B U. And uh, I'll put this one on there if you send me the audio file. Yeah, will do. You confused because it's like backwards. As, as yeah. it's fine. They'll fucking listen to it anyway. Yeah, right. Uh, this just send it off. You know, just put it out there as much as possible. My podcast on there is like uh, I don't know. I talk about practical application of stuff. I'm doing one later today that's like the I'm talking about the st like steroid stigma and, and all that and kind of comparing it to other things and why it's not a bit as big deal as people say it is. Um, I'm so jealous that you guys can talk about steroids so openly. I feel like as a girl, it's really hard to find girls that will actually like talk about it. Yeah. Cause even if they're doing it, we, I mean, there's online versus in person is way different online. Everybody will talk about what they're doing in person. Nobody in my gym has ever been on gear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. In the gym, they, they, they're a little bit more quiet, but even online, I feel like I'm like, if I ask this girl anything, like, is she going to be super uncomfortable? And then I see like Foo Odds channel and stuff and they just like go, oh, I did this this one time. And it's like a big joke. And I'm like, yeah, oh, that must be nice. <laughs> yeah. There's a, a lot of really strange stigmas I I involved. So you guys want to hear me talk about that? You should. It's a good question. Yes. <laughs> and then are you taking clients? How can people get a hold of you for coaching? Uh, my website is goobutraining.com or I'm at goob underscore you on Instagram. 
uh, before you pay me, please talk to me because I'm about to wait list. I've got a 12 week, uh, but let me, let me qualify that. I've got a 12 week transformation challenge coming up. Uh, I just finished the one. I'm going to post photos this weekend for voting it real quick. It's $500 to enter. That is 12 weeks of coaching, which is a hundred dollar discount from what it normally would cost you. The winner gets $2,000. I pay that out over Venmo cash app. I'll fucking mail you cash. I don't really care. If you win, you get the money. And I usually do that over at Instagram live. So everybody knows I'm not a piece of shit lying. And uh, the next one is starting within the next two weeks here. So if you want to join, send me your dollarinos and I'll get you on. Hey, that sounds like fun. I mean, what? It, everyone wants to look good for the holidays, right? Is that, that's not even a thing, but it's okay. We're, we're going to make it a thing. Honestly, we're going to be fucking shredded for Christmas day. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hey, my prep starts at the end of October, so I get it. Everyone just, you know what, we're already in quarantine and lockdown. You might as well just pretend like Christmas and Thanksgiving's canceled. Yeah, I think Christmas is like in uh, June this year. I, was, I think so. Just I was or at least after the Arnold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know what, I'm just because it's like my theme of my podcast, I'm going to ask you, when is your birthday? When is my birthday? When's your birthday? Uh, I was actually hatched. <laughs> you would throw something like that. I'm trying to find out your horoscope and you're like, I'm an egg. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I was hatched. There's no, uh, there's no appreciable birthday for that. I think it takes a few days to break through the membrane layers. So it would, it wouldn't even be an accurate horoscope anyway, honestly. <laughs> That's why I'm like, wait, so are you a Leo? No, that wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, since you're being a turd. <laughs> goob's an egg and there's no way around it he's exactly. his own horoscope <laughs> no no I'm, i don't do birthdays i don't do i don't even i don't tell you what my birthday is i don't want anything for my birthday it's not birthday guy wow you men are so private i tell you what i know so many guys at the gym that are super like just mysterious <laughs> it's uh, my a lot of my life is on like I don't know. It's like there's Instagram and then there's like real life. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of important things that go on in my life that I don't feel the need or want to share to Instagram. There's things that you like really want to keep private. Mm -hmm. Like anybody I've ever dated, I don't post them all over Instagram because it's mm -hmm. like, I really, it's like weird. Like to me, it's weird to like slather that shit all over the internet because it's like my business and that. It's well, cool. you have like your Instagram is your business page too. So yeah. sometimes you're like, I don't really want to post like booty yeah. shots and yeah. I'll post like cool little personal things like I collect knives and here's my dog and all that but it's you know I keep it as surface level as humanly possible because everybody likes to have their own life and things that are near and dear to them that they don't have to spread to the world that's true yeah sometimes silence is key too even yeah. with competing just unveil it for the stage right <laughs> yeah uh, covered up this prep or whatever they say yeah, they're just like, uh, put the hoodie up and just, you know, don't even show anything. I forget what the term is. They say, there's so many of them anymore. I don't know, Olympias are like that. Like, you never see the Olympians, like, ever want to post their preps. They're just in hiding. They just, you just know they're going to be there because they were there last year. Rami, every year Rami just, like, comes out of nowhere. He just posted a photo a couple of days ago and he looks insane. It's like, wait yeah, a minute, Rami. <laughs> somebody said that that might have been from the Arnold prep. That's was it right. current or the Arnold prep? <laughs> I think Nick Tragili posted and said it was current. And then like 700 other people said it was old. So like, it's probably old, but he still looks pretty good in it. I mean. He does. Yeah. But Hey, if Nick posted it, it's probably true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let you get going. So thanks so much for coming on. I'll send it to you for your podcast. Everybody, please go see Goob's podcast and his pre-workout. Check me out. All right. Well, thank you so much. Have a good one. Of course. Bye, babe. Bye.